Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I have something totally new for you. It is the updated version of the Vruzen battery building kit. They are totally new, a redesign of the caps, and we're gonna check them out now and then build a battery together with them. So without further ado, let's hit it. Now this is the Vruzen 4.0 kit. This is the higher power of the two new kits. There's also the V3.0, which is physically the same, except that it has red caps here for the positive part of the caps and also the contacts are not copper based like they are here. So this is the kit you're gonna to wanna to use for higher power applications up to about 15 to 20 amps per cell, whereas the V3.0 is gonna be better for lower power applications about three and a half to five amps per cell. Now let me show you how these caps are different now. Before you'll remember that the Vruzen caps had uh, two different caps, one for the positive end and one for the negative end. Now the new cap design, the entire cap is essentially the positive part of the cell. So what that means is that the uh, threaded contact up here, that is connected on the inside to a spring contact, and then the entire cap here is one piece. So if I were to take a battery cell here, this is just a standard 18650 cell, and I slide it in here, positive end first, once it goes all the way in there, it's making contact with that threaded post there. Now there's another smaller negative cap that gets threaded into the end here. This is what it looks like. The negative cap is very small and on the V4.0 kit it is black and it just gets threaded in the end here. And the kit actually comes with a handy little wrench that's got the uh, larger hex on one end to be able to thread this cap in. And then on the other end it's got a smaller hex and that's going to be for the nuts that go on the end of the threaded post. We're going to talk about that in a second. So this is how the new kit works. Essentially the entire cap here is the positive part of the cap and then the negative caps are just the small end cap that gets screwed in there. Now I'm going to pull the negative cap back off here so we can disassemble this one and I'll start showing you how the actual battery gets assembled here from multiple caps. Now to actually put multiple caps together, you can do it while the batteries are in the caps, but it's better to do it while the caps are empty. That way you don't have anything else to worry about. And the, the functional method of connecting these is the same as it was for all of the Vruzen kits. You'll notice that on the sides of the caps, there are dovetails, either the tails that stick out or the sockets for the dovetails here. And so the way this works is you're just going to want to line up all of the caps that you're putting together in the same orientation. The way I like to do it is to take the two sides that have the tails and put those on the top and to the right. You could do it, you know, however you want. You can do bottom to the left. You can do top to the left. For me, I always just did top and to the right, and that just kept it standardized for me. So for example, if I'm going to take three caps here and I want all of these together to make a parallel row, what I'm going to do is I'm going to align all of these with the tails to the top and to the right. Oop, that one's got to get turned. And then this one is in the right orientation. Then I'm going to slide these together. I'm just going to take one on top of the other, line up the tails there, and slide them together. Same thing for the next one. I'm just going to put one on top of the other here, line up the tails and the sockets, and slide it together. Now you will notice on the sides that Two sides have this little shelf here. You kind of see it from that angle there a little better. And that means that it only slides on from one orientation. So for example, if I take this last cap off here, this one has to slide on from the top like this. It cannot slide on this way because that shelf is in the way. And that just makes it so that the caps will stay together a little bit nicer. And once this one slides all the way down here, it can't slide past the bottom here. So that creates a nice stop so they all sit nice and flush. So now I've got another set of three caps that I've already assembled here. If I wanted to combine these into a series connection, what I would do is I would take uh, one of these two and I would just flip it over here. And now you'll notice that the tails here are lined up with these sockets here. Same thing on the bottom. The tails here are lined up with these sockets. So I'm just gonna lift this up, line up those tails and sockets. Sometimes it's a little easier said than done depending how long your parallel group is. And then slide them together like that. Now if we check the bottom, we can see everything is connected here. Back at the top, everything is connected. And now we have what is effectively set up to be a 2S 3P setup here. Now I could keep taking sets of three and I could keep doing the same thing. So here I would flip this one upside down. I would line it up, 
slide it together, and now I have another parallel group that's set onto this block here. So I could keep doing the same thing and build out my battery. And in fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do, because in this case, I'm going to build a 10S 3P battery. That's 10 cells in series, three in parallel here. So let's keep going. So there we go, now I've got my 30 caps all lined up in rows of three, and every other one is reversed, which will allow me to do my series connections going from the positive of one cell to the negative of the next, and vice versa. The next thing I'm going to do is prepare my cells. So I've got a few here, but let's go grab some more so that we have 30 cells. So I've got my cells here, and I also just want to double check that they're all at the same voltage. So let me slide my caps out of the way for a moment, and let's just go check these cell voltages real quick and make sure that they're all at the same voltage, and that means I can safely put them all in parallel groups together. Okay, so all of my cells are at effectively the same voltage. They're all about 3.67 or 3.68 volts, so that's perfect. Now I can start putting them in my caps. To do that, the important thing you're going to want to remember here is that the cells always go into the cap with the positive end first. So the positive end, of course, is the one that has the bit of a button on it, and it usually has that white ring insulator on there. So I'm going to put all of these in positive first. I'll start on one side of the battery here. And now I can bring my negative caps into play. Now, like I mentioned before, you do get this nice little wrench here in the kit, and you don't want to go nuts with this thing in terms of cranking it down too hard. You really only need to go about finger tight. So you're going to want to apply some downward pressure here to push against the spring on the positive end of the cell here. So put that downward pressure and then just start tightening the wrench, and you'll feel those threads catch and you really only need to go about finger tight here. You don't need to go crazy trying to wrench it down. Depending on the length of your cell, most 18650s are a little bit different depending on the manufacturer. You'll probably end up with a negative cap either just flush with the top of the caps here, or you might have a little bit showing over the top just like this one, which is perfectly fine. You just wanna make sure you get a turn or two in there. Now I'm just gonna go through and put all of these negative caps on the same way. Apply some downward pressure, start turning the wrench there, and then just tighten it up to about finger tight. If you feel like you're starting to strip out the hex on here, then you're going too tight. And in fact, if you over tighten it, you can actually dent the positive end of your cells. So there's no reason to go crazy tight. You don't need to get out your like air driver or something like that. Just finger tight is good enough. If you're worried about that, if you don't go tight enough, maybe your negative caps will vibrate out. You don't have to worry about it. For one thing, you've got the spring action from the positive end of the cap, and then you're also gonna have bus bars that are tightened down on top of this cap that are gonna prevent it from turning as well. So it's not gonna loosen up on you later. All right, and now that I've got all of my negative caps on on this side, I can go ahead and flip the battery over. We can work on the other side. Also, now that I'm gonna have cells connected next to cells, I'm gonna go ahead and take off my watch here. I've already taken off my metal ring, but any metal drawer you have on at this time, you definitely wanna make sure you take off and clear any extraneous metal pieces from your workstation. All right, now I can start putting in all of my cells on this side, and again, we're going positive end first. You always, always go positive first. That's the only way to put cells in the Vruzen V3.0 and V4.0 kit. Okay, and now same thing. I can go ahead and start putting on my negative caps here. Okay, now I have all of my negative caps on and my battery is ready to start adding bus bars. I can actually start making the connections on my battery here. So I'm gonna take out my bus bars. And here we've got two different types of bus bars. We've got our end terminals and then we've got our normal bus bars. The end terminals, like it sounds, they go on the end of your battery here and they make it easy to connect some type of discharge wire. The standard bus bars can really go anywhere. They can make parallel connections and they can make series connections anywhere in the battery. Now to start, I'm going to leave off my end connections. I know this is going to be the negative terminal of my battery. This is essentially negative one. So I'm gonna start with all of my connections after this. 
So if this is negative one, then I know that the positive connection down here on the bottom of plus one is going to go to minus two. And that means my next connection on top of the battery here is gonna be from plus two to minus three. So now I can go ahead and start making those connections. You can either do the uh, series connections, this is you know positive to negative here first, or you can do your parallel connections. I'm gonna just start with my series connections here and then run across the parallels as well. Now at this stage, you do need to be very careful because as you're making connections on your battery, you do not want to touch the wrong terminals together. If you don't understand parallel and series connections, frankly, you should have never gotten this far. You shouldn't be using this kit. But just to go over that again, series connections are always gonna be from the positive of one cell to the negative of another, and parallel are going to be from the positive of a cell group to another positive in the group, or from the negative of a cell group to another negative in that group. So I'm gonna continue making my series connections here. I'm gonna follow those up with parallel connections across these groups. Now I can take my nuts and I can start screwing those on. And then I can use the other end of my wrench here with the smaller hex to tighten those down. But I'm actually gonna put all of these nuts on here first before I tighten those all the way down. And as you probably noticed, these are very small nuts. So one trick is to just preload your wrench here, and then you can use that to thread the nuts onto the thread posts, and that can be a lot easier. Now that I have all six of these nuts on here, I can go ahead and start tightening down these bus bars. Okay, so now I have my plus two to minus three connection. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go from plus four to minus five. I'm gonna go from plus six to minus seven and then from plus eight to minus nine. Same idea here. Now, if you're wondering why am I doing the series connections first instead of the parallel connections first, it doesn't really make a huge difference. I generally like to do the series first because that's the first piece of metal that the electricity is actually gonna flow through. And if you do the uh, parallels first, then electricity has to flow through the parallel bus bar and then into the um, series bus bar on top of it, and it just adds a little more resistance. So by doing the series first, you have less resistance in your connections. It's a very small difference, but you know, it is a, a difference. And again, you notice I can just sort of pick up a nut with the wrench here and use that to slide it on. Now that I have all six on here, I'll go ahead and tighten these down. and I can move on to my next set of connections. Now I mentioned that you have to be very careful in this step because you have connections between battery cells here and you don't wanna drop something randomly on top of the battery. At this stage, while I still don't have any connections on the other side of the battery here, it is relatively safe, okay? So I could theoretically you know, drop something between two cells that are not meant to be connected. So there's going to be a connection here. Here there should not be a connection. I can actually touch here and it's not a problem because there's no connection on the other side of the battery. Once I get these connected and I flip it over, then it becomes an issue if you drop a bus bar where it shouldn't be. So we're gonna go over that in a minute. Okay, now I have all of my regular bus bars on this side of the battery. I'm just gonna go back and add my terminal connections here. So assuming that this is the side of the battery I want my wires to exit, I'll just come across this gap with one bus bar and on the second one, I'll put a terminal connector just like that. And that'll give me a nice area to crimp on some discharge wire, probably some nice 14 or 12 gauge silicone wire, and I will be off to the races once I get the other side of this battery connected. And same thing on this side, just span that with the bus bar, and then I'll put my terminal connector right there. And there we go, terminal connectors on the end. Now I can flip this battery over and start working on the other side of it. And here's where I mentioned we have to just be oh so careful because at this point, all of these other connections down here are already connected. And on top of the battery, these connections can become live once we add our bus bars. So what I'm gonna do is while I'm working on the battery, I'm actually gonna cover part of it that I'm not working on with some black rubber foam here. And that's gonna prevent me from just dropping any stray bus bars or something on there. So now we said that this was the negative end of the battery on the bottom side, that's negative one, so that makes this positive one. And so positive one has connect to minus two. So that's the next step here. We'll go ahead and make those connections. Now I can put my nuts on just like on the other side. Okay, and now I can move on to the next set of series connections here, but I'm going to take a second piece of foam and I'm going to cover 
the connections I've already done here. So that way I'm only working on the connections that I know that I'm actually connecting at the time. Okay, so I've got the first two sections connected. Now I can move on to positive five to minus six here. And I'm just gonna use a non-metallic object here to hold this foam down. Okay, looking good. Moving on to the next section here. All right, and now we can do that last set of connections. And there we go. Now we have this side of the battery all connected as well. So at this point, we have a fully connected 36 volt battery. And because these are two and a half amp hour cells, this is effectively a 36 volt and seven and a half amp hour battery. Now we're not technically finished yet. I mean, this is a full 36 volt, seven and a half amp hour battery, but it's not really ready to be charged. There are two different ways you could charge this thing. You could either do balance charging, and so you need to connect a balance charger, and then you'd have a fancy RC style charger that would measure every cell and balance it. Or you could use a BMS or a battery management system, which is what I generally tend to like to do. And then you would connect your BMS to each cell. I've got a number of videos showing how to do that. And then you would just charge it with a typical like electric bicycle battery charger. That requires a little more work in the front end to connect that BMS, but then charging is much simpler. And that's why I usually prefer that method. But now you can see what it's like to work with these new caps from the Vruzen 4.0 kit. The Vruzen 3.0 kit is very similar. They're just slightly different colored and the connectors are not copper based like these are. Now I hope you found that video helpful learning how to use the new V3.0 and V4.0 kits from Vruzen. It's a really cool design. I really like the update. I wish I could take credit for it, but really all the credit goes to Orvaksh and the rest of his team there in India for doing this awesome update. I provided a little bit of guidance along the way, but really they did an awesome job with this and I really like the new design for the caps. If you want to get one of your own, they're always available on Vruzen.com, but there is going to be a crowdfunding for the launch of the new kit, and I will put a link to that in the description below this video. When that's over, though, you can always head over to the Vruzen site, and they'll be there. It may not be as good of a price as there was during the introductory crowdfunding period, but it'll always be there. Last but not least, before we go, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Michiana Fisherman, who took me quite literally. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. Anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, just put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. For anyone who doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you here next time. <laughs>